I'm back working on another video here, and uh, I have this water tank that I got. Uh, I'll leave a link in the description to where I got this. It's really cool. It's a stainless steel, fully stainless steel tank, so it's great for drinking water. I've been building out this truck camper. We have a plan for where this water will go. The only problem is, is that it's five gallons, 20 liters, so that when it's filled up, it's really hard to like tip out and pour. It's really hard to carry around. It's really just challenging in general. I want it to be good for drinking water so that it should have a faucet that's kind of an on-demand tap. And the other thing is that it's stainless steel, so I want to be able to like leave it out in the sun all day or maybe even put it by a campfire or something like that, heat the water up, and then be able to take a warm shower. It's not really rated for pressure, but another thought I had was that if I can use an air compressor to just add a little bit of pressure to the inside, it should allow water to spill out the end if I have a, uh, a hose, an airtight hose going in there. There are two holes on this thing. So there's this main output here, and then there's a little vent hole here. So I was thinking it'd be really great to get like a bike pump Schrader valve attached to this little hole. However, uh, there's not a lot of manufacturers that make a M10 Schrader valve. So after a lot of looking around, I finally found a company in the UK that made the exact part I need. That is a Schrader valve on one side and then an M10 bolt thread on the other side. So this threads right in and is great. I have a little O-ring there and that seals it up and makes it airtight. This just hooks right onto here, goes down. And currently I have this set to four PSI, so not even that much. This inflates like this. Just like that, we have four PSI of pressure in here. It holds pretty good. You heard it kind of like popping and stuff like that as it was inflating. So definitely something to keep an eye on if it starts wearing the seams out or something like that, especially as it gets used more and with heat and stuff like that. Uh, could be a concern and I might have to pivot. So I have the inflation portion covered. Next thing I can't figure out is for some reason, these threads are like some weird proprietary, there's no other cap I can find to replace this. My plan is, is to drill into this cap and have these like quick disconnects. They work like that. Then I can just quickly disconnect any hoses or nozzles or spray things or anything like that. And then at the bottom, I can just have like PEX or some tube go into the bottom so that water will be pushed out when it gets pressurized. Another solution I just came up with is there are these like rubber sort of caps. This can go all the way around and then be tightened up. That might at least give us a temporary solution. And if I do end up wanting to move forward with this and everything makes sense, then I'll end up drilling out this cap permanently. It is filling up. The water filling up is adding more pressure than uh, the valve can release. Dang, let's see the test. Oh, there we go, we're full. <laughs> when we pressurize this, nothing explodes and we actually get some flow coming out the top. Oh. Just like that. Fountain. Got my little water contraption set up here and I'm just gonna do a gallons per minute test. This is a five gallon bucket and I'm just gonna see, I'm gonna do a timer and see how long it takes to uh, fill up the bucket with the system. Timer is going. the water that 
took two minutes and 22 seconds. Just did the math and it is about two gallons a minute, which is great. That's actually better than the pump I was gonna order. So all things considered, I think I'm pretty happy with that. And so let's finish getting through this thing. What feels like a crazy battle finally over. I got through this freaking thing and it fits great. I got my pressurized quick disconnect hose connected to a braided stainless steel hose and then that's connected to this stainless steel sprayer and then this is all set up to pressurize. Uh, if anyone is planning on doing this as well, this can is not meant to be pressurized. So do this at your own risk. You got pressurized water. So that works pretty darn good and it shuts off right at five PSI. But then whenever you're ready to fill it up again, you just take this guy off. And then I got this flexible hose. All this stuff I'll leave on Amazon with this little right angle start stop thing. And it just hooks right up and you can stop it, turn it on. And then whenever you're ready to start filling up, fill up and then you can undo this guy so it doesn't repressurize. And that's filling. Whenever you get to the point where you want to stop it, instead of having to run all the way back to the source of where the water is coming from, which, you know, can lead to a big mess, you can just stop it here. So that stops it, ready to go. So that's pretty cool. I'll show a little bit more using this in action here so that you can see more what it looks like. Here we are camping in the beautiful Eastern Sierras in California. And we're set up here and we're doing some work and got our little Starlink going and had a really nice night. Just wanted to show the last little bit on this uh, water tank. This hose is just like a braided five foot like dishwasher hose or something like that. That's connected to this little spray nozzle. So the way this works is you just turn this on and that starts pressurizing. And as that's going, you can take your water bottle, just fill up and you've got on-demand pressurized water. You turn it off, fill up your bottles and uh, Fill up any of your other water, pots and pans, things like that. This nozzle also has a little swivel so it can go into shower mode. Uh, then once we're done filling up water bottles and things like that, all we do is this air hose that's connected and we just twist it and it lets all the pressure out. Um, just to keep it safe, I made this little uh, strap to kind of hold the uh, air compressor in place. If you want to heat this up, you can unstrap it here, unstrap it here, take the whole thing out, put it next to a campfire, or even right now it's 90 plus degrees outside. You could easily just take this outside and leave it in the sun. You could have hot water pretty quick. Quick disconnect nozzles. So you can take off the uh, spray nozzle here. Here we have a little hose attachment that comes out. Pretty easy. This side connects to your standard garden hose. This is a uh, drinking water safe hose and it's flexible so it compacts down really really small again I'll leave all of the links to all of this stuff in the description of where I got all this on Amazon uh, make it easy if anyone wants to recreate their own that goes in and then the only other cool thing I found online is if you have a hose spigot that doesn't have threads on it I found this little thing, again, link in the description. This will just screw right on, and then you can just squeeze it around any sort of standard size faucet, and it should allow you to fill up uh, water that way. So with all this, we've been pretty set. We also have a water filter that is like one of those hanging bag kinds. So we haven't had to use that yet because we've stayed at campsites that have water. And if not, this thing has lasted us like about a week or so. So uh, we don't need to fill up that often, but if we're camping by a river, we can hang a bag above it and then just let it filter and drain into the, uh, into the big tank there. So that would work great for us as well. Yeah, pretty happy with this. I love that this has a 
pressurized air compressor instead of a, a pump because a pump would require you to either mount the pump to the can and then run wires somewhere or whatever. It's kind of tricky. This is so easy. You just disconnect it and pick the whole thing up and you've got a whole unit that you can take anywhere, take it away from the car, wash the dog, wash your tires, do whatever. Everything was easy enough to find and it's just a matter of putting everything together. So thanks a ton for watching this and yeah, hopefully this has helped someone create a cool water system to get outside and be off grid for a while. So yeah, thanks.